All right, take one. Are what you, are you? Mm-hmm. What are you doing, nerd? Yeah. Start over. <laughs> we are not professionals. We don't half the time know what the hell we're doing. We're, <laughs> we're pretty handy. But this repair, I don't think there's a repair book for this. So you just look at it and you figure out what might work. And There's yeah. no handbook for a 1980s Taiwanese headliner. Because there wasn't a handbook for when they built it either. No. Shopping for headliner material. Oh. This. Yep. With lumberjack. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's over here. Multi-purpose vinyl. Velvet. Uh, velvet. Multi-purpose velvet. Velvet. Right here, velvet. Multi-purpose vinyl. Hmm. Is that vinyl? Yeah. That's kind of neat. I like that. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking, actually. Yeah, that's this actually isn't bad. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of got a little bit of gray in it. I like it. It's thick. Gray and blue. It almost, almost matches the cushions. Hmm. That's cool. Look at this one. This is kind of cool, too. Yeah. Be a little dark for a headliner though. Yeah, it would make it feel cozy, but then it would kind of close it in a little bit. Do they have marine vinyl? I don't know if that would even matter. Uh -huh. This is similar to what's in a lot of stuff. Actually, and this is too. Marine. That one's got texture also. Yeah. So, like high blemishes. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I don't see very many light colors. Mm. That's, is that so this vinyl? is very soft. Oh, that's this that's kind of like um, like animal hide or something. Yeah, but it's all synthetic. Hmm. We could do like, some leather nerd. We can make chairs. Oh, fancy. Here's marine vinyl, but they don't uh, have any light color. Is, yeah. And of course, this is really for exterior. And this is very heavy. What you doing, nerd? Um gonna do the headliner but then I forgot we have mission creep so we're gonna do the headliner when we took the headliner we found these wires up here and some of these wires are for uh, I checked which breakers turn them on they do have power and they're um, spreader lights anchor light and something else that I don't know what it is yet but it's obviously able to be used for something so we're gonna run them from where they were all the way back to where the steaming light, the rear uh, white nav light, um, was on. But they didn't give us much room to run any more than two wires. Matter of fact, the way they did it, it looks like they uh, just used a, a tiny drill bit and they just drilled straight, slightly at an angle, and there was just enough room for two wires to run through there. And obviously, those wires were run when it was built. So we were going to try to. Uh, you know, thread like a, a runner wire through there so that we could just uh, pull them back through. Repair follies. That's why you always tug on them. You can't always assume. Yeah. Alright. Time for the heat gun.
battery powered heat gun. It's great that it doesn't have a cord, but it does take just a hair longer to heat up. furring strips up here and of course we filled all this with epoxy but these are spaced and look over here one more time you can see that the original builders shimmed this piece of wood up here now it's I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna, we're gonna have to fix this one up a little bit but uh, so we have our pieces of wood up here <clears throat> these are gonna have to be shimmed too we've already got this side shimmed those are coated right yeah these are epoxy coated with total boat uh, um, it's like a wood absorbs into the wood, a special epoxy. So these are going to be our attachment points uh, and they're also shimmed so that they are the right distance for the other headliner for this. We've already kind of test fitted our plywood and Luon and then this one is just in place and see we've got these shims here. And this is where our handrails are going to go. Yeah and this is where the handrails attach and this piece of wood is about about that wide. Yeah. Okay, and then these are the, right here are the old attach points. So all we're doing is we've got these in, so I am now attaching them. So going close to the center line. Sometimes we'll hit spots that weren't filled properly and we'll just have to move over. I had one over here. You can see it's strong enough to suck that screw right up into the wood, but the one next to it wasn't. That, that was a good one. That's going to be plenty strong for a handrail. Let me go check. Yeah, that'd be a surprise. Let's make sure there's no holes up there. Grab that. Oh my god. Alright, so now we're done with this side? Yeah, we're going to do this side. Okay, she's finishing up the screws. So, the structure is pretty solid. I think we're going to go back over it with uh, a little bit of 5200 here and there. I had to compress that a little bit. That's okay. That's, that's going to be all covered. <laughs> <Did you see laughs> <that>? <laughs> what happened? I like smacked it and like flipped it uh. in my face. You can move it after it's done. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't anymore. More? Uh, give it a little one more. Right there, perfect. Two more screws are in that box right there. You're supposed to be handing these to me. Oh yeah? Am I your helper? Okay.
Good job. <laughs> all right, so we got all the furring strips up there. Actually came out pretty good. What you doing now, nerd? Uh, we got all our furring strips up. We got everything in place. This actually was a piece of wood that was on the boat. It's, uh, I think it's just pressure treated plywood. Uh, it got a little bit messed up with the water, but I'm reusing it because it should be dry and it actually held up fairly well. So, and you can see from our seams and everything, it looks like the work that we did is gonna work out just fine. So we're just putting screws back in the old pads. Same pads that were there, same holes, but with bigger screws. So, with any luck, they should bite just fine. Especially when you put the middle ones, yeah. So we got the Luan trim wood up here, which is what the headliner will be attached to. We're going to have about 30 screws, small screws, just under the surface. They pull right through. It's pretty solid. Yes, it is very solid. Hello, nerd. <laughs> I'm recording. Are you? Let's go over here. Hmm? Come over here. Over where? We can talk about this. This stuff is really strong smelling. What? So, we spray the adhesive on here, and it's like cobwebs. Yeah. You can see like, it's like falling down. So now you gotta wait at least five minutes yeah. for it to tack up. Because, uh, if you do it too quickly it doesn't work very good it just is slimy and it doesn't stick and then you wait for it to dry but there's no air getting to it to let it dry you know because it's got the two layers on there so you have to let it tack up in each spot and then when you push them together they'll stick but and it depends on how thick your glue is that's why you kind of try to do a good spray paint job on it not make it too thick because if you have globs of glue or real thick glue then it won't uh, won't dry we had to put this paper up so we don't spray adhesive on the windows and the, the wood in here the teak so. oh, shit. Something got my eye. Yeah. One of the spider webs. Uh, Blue spider web. So we went ahead and glued this section up here, and then we're gonna do it in three sections. And then we had um, a Zapto knife. Can I just trim it? And then we use these rollers to kind of get this even. So right now what we're doing is we're spraying some more further down the material and uh, we're gonna basically roll it so this edge to about maybe an inch or so and depending on how much we have left we may tuck it or just cut it. That's looking good so far. <laughs> Where do we just go, nerd? Uh, get some more spray glue and spray glue adhesive remover. Yeah, we're trying a different yeah, brand. It's, it's one thing, like if you're refurbishing a boat, all the little incidentals add up. This was $65 right here. Yeah. So. The other bottle was 25 bucks a piece. Right there, 
Spongerama. It's a local pontoon tour boat here in Carbon Springs. It's famous for sponge diving and sponge sponging. Positioned in a place where there's shipyards and boats get built. So That's a real shipyard. Yeah. yeah. It's a working shipyard. So that the heritage over there. See it. So that heritage was built. A yellow. Yeah. Yellow stripes. That's all ready to go. I think they're just outfitting it with all the electronics and whatever else. I'm sure it's sold. But that was built just to the right of that, about uh, 100 yards, in that shipyard over the course of about one year, what would you say? Uh, could be more. A little more, a year and three months. That's what they do there. Yeah. Several ships have come out of there. It's like commercial fishing ships. Yeah. Yep, it's fun being at a marina. Yeah. Let's go look at the headliner. fabric in the store and all that stuff it's it's hard to tell what it's going to look like but it's a little darker than I thought it was but it's definitely going to make it look cozy mm -hmm. and luckily these sideboards there was enough room everywhere to just tuck it and it worked out pretty good we don't think we're going to need some quarter round but there's some slight imperfections some of it's from just the woodwork the way it was so obviously as we're installing the headliner we're um, super critical, okay. yeah, because we're now looking there. You look out there. It's done with the headliner. We just have to do this piece over here, but we actually don't have enough headliner for that. So we have, we wanted to see how this turned out. But we spent another 75 or 80 bucks on the rest of the headliner, and we like it for sure. Um, it's definitely an upgrade. Yeah. Now this is the material we got. This is from Joanne's Fabrics, and it's just general purpose vinyl. See the back. It says soft side on this side. It's not. A lot of headliners foam back. But we didn't buy that because we didn't, we didn't like any of this. We didn't like any of the foam back stuff. Yeah. <coughs> this is also should be much much tougher. I mean, this is vital. It's almost like pontoon decking, but not quite as thick. Um, so this and it's a little bit stretchy, so you have you know error correction when you're you know if you get a bubble or something, you just press it up there with the glue. As long as you got enough glue on there, it should do it. So this is the material, Joanne's Fabrics. They had several others as well that we probably could have 
went for it. They even had traditional stuff, um, stuff that you would get at like Defender or whatever. And uh, you know when they have their specials, it's pretty cheap. So this right here, these funny things. This is where the handrail goes. The handrail is about this wide, yeah. so it's gonna take up these gaps. This right here is where the repair is. We made it one continuous piece because we just wanted to see how bad it looked and it looks too bad for us. So originally there was a strip of wood going between the handrails. So the handrails go here mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have a strip, a trim strip. And we make wrap it in the same vinyl so it kind of blends in. Yeah, we might, we might wrap it in that vinyl so it'll basically be just a vinyl bump here. Or, you know, it's gonna have teak handrails here. We might just get a piece of teak or whatever type of wood. Yeah, that's true. Oak here so it looks, it would match. Um, and this worked out good where we tucked the wood, I'm sorry, the vinyl under the wood uh, came out pretty good. Some areas were really tough to get under there. Um, actually really just two. And uh, it's probably because it was a screw just on the other side. So we just had to get it in there as good as we could and then we figured out a way to trim it. But that makes it a much cleaner look. Um, if you weren't able to do that, you could trim it right here and you could just put like a piece of cord around or we thought maybe like even rope, like some sisal rope or some kind of rope, nautical rope that you could tie in right there as a trim piece to make everything closed out and look good. But overall, do you like it? I love it. I think it came out pretty good. Yeah. And our repair is great. Show them what we used. What for what? The adhesive spray. Oh, yeah. It's in the yellow one, yeah. That's adhesive remover. So, there's two types of spray. I think we can throw the other ones out already. Yeah. There's 3M Super Trim Adhesive. As for sale right, this is what they suggest for headliner. But there's two types. There's yellow Super Trim Adhesive, and then there's just Super Trim Adhesive. That one's for headliners. We used, on this first section, we used just Super Trim Adhesive. And it was very similar to this, um, but they didn't spray as well. For whatever reason, this one sprays a lot better. And this one, I think, is a lot like the 3M1300L, which we use at work on airplanes for all kinds of stuff. And if it's done right, it's very good. So anyways, I recommend the yellow Super Trim Adhesive. We're going to use this from now on. As soon as I get home, I'm going to order two more cans for Amazon to do this side and whatever else. We still have to do the beeper and then a few other things. But. So yellow super trim adhesive is what I would recommend. It sprays better too. I don't know what it is. And the rollers. The rollers are great. <coughs> Gotta have rollers. And this has little things here so you can put your thumb. You gotta put a little pressure on it. And you really need to, you know, get a firm contact between the two surfaces. And of course, you have to spray the thing that the headliner is going on, whether it's wood or whatever, but you also have to spray the headliner. So you spray, spray both parts, wait at least four minutes, four to five minutes. It's hard to wait. We set a timer because we're just so impatient. So we waited at least four minutes, <coughs> which really meant it was probably five. And then we started putting it together and it held up perfect. So hopefully it holds up over time, but it should. We still have to finish this section. Yeah, we gotta do this section. This one's got to be a, a little bit of a bear because this is one long section. Yeah. And we have to tuck it all under there into the cabinets. Take the speakers off and the lights. Take the speakers off, the lights off, and uh, we'll see. But overall, I'm very happy we went this way. And it's going to be much better than it was. It makes it a little bit cozy because uh, of the darker color. It's going to be a lot better than it was. And the roof is now leak-free, firm. The handrails, which were hanging down because there was nothing to grab on this side, are going to be able to be grabbed. So, okay. Stay tuned to part three so we can finish the rest of this and then put up all the handrails and all the accessories. Yes, make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see the rest of the uh, headliner install. We'll put it out here and probably next week or the week after. We got a lot of stuff going on. So stay tuned for part three.